shiny crafty people and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Totten and today I want to show you how to take a pair of shorts that you really love, maybe some old shorts that are dying, and turn them into a pair of sleeping shorts that you can use this pattern for make some for yourself or some for your friends or loved ones and they make a great gift and they're actually really easy to do. So why don't you join me down here at the cutting table and I'll show you exactly what we need to do to get started. So for this project, we're gonna need uh, a pair of shorts that you really like. These are really old ones that I've been wearing forever, but I love them, I sleep in them occasionally, or at least I used to, they're kind of dying. And uh, we're gonna use those to make a pattern. We're gonna use a piece of, of some kind of material. This is some, some uh, foam core boards to make our pattern from. We're gonna need some elastic. This is just three quarter inch elastic that's a knit non-roll elastic. I'm gonna get some matching thread. I have some purple thread to match this really nice purple fabric that I have. I'm making this as a gift for a friend. I've got some clips to use, a Sharpie to draw our pattern, and of course, something to cut with and a cutting pad. And then I'm also gonna use this really great uh, sketchbook to draw out some stuff to show you to see. So uh, let me clear all this in just a moment and then we'll work on the sketchbook and show you what we need to do. So these are the shorts that I'm gonna use and you'll see that these have seen better days. I mean, they're all, dead but they're really comfortable lightweight and so what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to look at the way shorts are shaped so if I sort of fold them in half along this design you'll notice that there is the bottom of the leg this goes up the side of your hip this goes down through the the rear end or the crotch area and you'll notice the way it's shaped you see here it it um I'll straighten these edges out it's got this shape to it, it comes down. So it's got more of that turn and the back because you have usually a bigger butt than you have your front area. And you'll see here it comes down, that shape is different. It's a little bit smaller of a curve in the front than in the back. So what that means is if we're drawing this out, it means that our, our pieces will be shaped, there, there will be this the from your waist to your waist. So if we have a person here, right? Here's our person. We're gonna basically use this center point as the measurement, and then we're gonna measure around to the back center to the middle of your butt. And that'll be, we'll just have one piece and it's gonna be shaped like here's the center um, on your hip right and then it's going to the front will be here and then back will be here and it's going to come down lower and then on this side it'll come down a little more because you have more junk in the back more junk in the trunk than you have needed space in the front so this will be a little bit bigger so if, if you were to take this shape and put it over here it would kind of look like it would come down smaller. Now here's what's interesting about this. I zoomed you in a little bit there. So th th this shape would be a little bit different. It would, it would come down more and then that would be the front shape as opposed to the back shape. Now for men, uh, this is gonna be a little bit bigger space here than it would be for women because men have external bits that need some space and women don't need as much uh, space in the front of their uh, shorts or pants unless you just want more space there and then in the back you want to see if you have a larger uh, rear end you would want to put a little more of space there for comfort you get it too big if you make this really big if you came out way like this you're just gonna be really baggy it's not gonna be real great because it might be way too baggy but we're gonna look at the way these shorts which i really love and in fact the friend i'm making these for um would fit these comfortably as well so now i'm gonna take some measurements off of these shorts and in fact, I'm going to measure sort of how wide this space is here. If I go to sort of some in the wider area, we're looking at about 12 inches across, and that equates to 24 inches across this shape, basically. So this is gonna be 24, I'm having to do it upside down. That'll be a 24 inch space there. And it will work out that way on the elastic as well. I'm gonna put the elastic in and it'll shrink up a little bit. So it's not really gonna be 48 inches around Obviously my waist is not that large. And then we're gonna look at how wide we are on the leg down here. So this leg is about 
14 doubled, which is 28. And I'm writing that on my sheet. And then of course, from this point to this point, the pointed part is right at 16, which makes that 32 across at the widest point, 32 from point to point there. The easiest way to make this pattern though, is to literally come over here and get our piece of material that we're gonna draw on and to place this down, use the bottom edge to put the, the bottom of the pant right there. And then also, so draw that line on. Now you will have to add some material to this because you have to have seam allowances, obviously. But we're gonna measure this up and then I'm gonna get, I'm gonna sort of straighten out as I get in here. So this is the back, by the way. I wanna make sure I write back for me because that's the, that's the bigger one. And yeah, look how good that fits. Now I'm gonna flip around to the other side <coughs> and recognize that I'm gonna need to fold some stuff in here. Look at this, I'm gonna need to fold in the part that was in the back because remember the back is bigger than the front. So I do that, I fold that in. Now you see how much difference this is? Back to front, see? A big difference. So but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna do it on the other side. And I'm, I'm making a tool here that I can use over and over again. So I'm also gonna bring this down to the bottom. Actually, I need to make sure it lines up exactly across from this one. So I'll make a point. That's where that point needs to come across. So when I put this down here, now the points line up and it's right along the bottom edge. See that right down there? So now I can mark it and then come back in. And then I'm gonna clean this up a little, but this will be my tool. Obviously I'm not gonna make the pants that small I'm obviously not gonna make the pants this small. I'm gonna use this edge once I measure how wide I need to be. And so then I can come along and I can cut this out using whatever type of device I want. I'm gonna use this rotary cutter. Now I've changed out this blade for an old blade, which I use on paper and things like plastic. I don't use a fabric blade. And remember, this is our final shape. So we're not actually going to, we're gonna have to add seam allowances when we get this to the actual device, to our actual fabric, we'll add seam allowances so that we get the right shape. Now here's the great part. If you're gonna make a bunch of shorts for yourself or people of a specific size in your family, make one of these patterns and then just hold on to it. And now you've got a pattern for the whole family or different sizes for different people. Ooh. But these shapes tend to be similar. All right, so I have my two shapes there and I am ready to get started. So um, let's get some fabric out and do that. All right, so I have made my, taken my fabric out here and this fabric is, I'm gonna see how wide it is selvage to selvage. This fabric is right at 39 inches wide. So, or 38 that shape. So obviously it's not going to be wide enough for these pants, but if we look at the size of the pant, it would definitely fit the width of this fabric. There's plenty there. So I could fold this entire piece along the, the with the salvage edges and see how wide that's going to be. That's only about 36. I gotta see how big these pants have to be for me to actually wear them. I gotta see how wide they have to be. Let me look back at the thing. I needed 32 inches across at the widest point. So I can actually, I'm also gonna make sure there's no stretch in this fabric. The stretch is gonna matter if it's only stretch one way, you'd want it to stretch around your body rather than, um, you wanted the stretch to go this way rather than up and down because you want the stretch to be around your body, not height wise this way. So in fact, I can take this fabric and lay it out 
from salvage to salvage on this fabric and get the get the uh, size cuts out of it. So it's perfect. All right, this is this fabric is 37 inches, so I know I only need 32. So I'm gonna fold it this direction. So I folded the fabric in half to get me about 36 inches width. And I'm actually gonna use this edge, this salvage edge to be my, to be my bottom, to be the bottom edge where I'll fold the, or the top, one of the two, um, where I'll either fold up, fold down for the elastic or fold up for the, the legs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fold this again in half. You basically wanna get two pieces that are going to end up being wide enough, at least uh, 32 plus inches plus um, your seam allowances, and then tall enough for the height of the shorts. So these shorts are currently, let me just measure them, 17 inches tall. 17 inches tall, but I've got to leave room to do a casing for the elastic and to fold my seams at the bottom. So I want to do a, uh, a one inch at the bottom for the seam and then um, at least two inches at the top for the casing. So 17 plus two is 19 and another one inch is 20. So I need this to be at least 20 inches tall this way. So let me go ahead and measure out 20 inches. This will be right near the end of the table here. So I will go ahead and cut that in just a moment. And I can mark this however I like, but I have a mark on my table that's gonna work really well for it. So I will use the mark on the table. 20 is right at this mark. However you wanna to get to this cut is fine. All right, I've got my 20 and cut that off. And then I'm gonna make this the bottom of the shorts. So I will turn the entire thing around. And now I know that I need this entire thing to be, like I said, 32 plus seam allowances. My seam allowance will be at least half an inch. So um, I need 33 inches wide. Now this is fabric is in four, four, four over, right? So I'm going to cut basically two pieces out of this fabric. There's four layers of fabric in here. This is my folded edge over here. So I know that I need 33, which is 16 and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna make sure that I have 16 and a half inches here. And you can mark this with chalk or a pen, whatever works that makes the most sense for you. I'll put a mark on it with my Sharpie. And then in fact, I'll just line that up on a line on my table so I don't have to freak out about how I'm gonna cut that. And then I'll use my cutter. Now, when I finish this part, I will have, basically I'll have turned in two pieces that are 33 inches wide by 20 inches tall. And that's what I will have here when I open these up, I'll have two pieces. So I'm gonna open up so I just have two of these to make the, the back right and then or the front so if i lay it out there it'll become and then i remember i'm going to leave my two inches at the top and my one inch at the bottom so the best way for me to do this is going to be um, to set up a little different angle and show it to you so my 33 inches is going to be from this point over so i will line this up right on the edge and then i'm going to make sure that i have my one inch or my one inch along the bottom to fold up the bottom edge of this. So I'm gonna use a chalk pencil and I come in and draw in my shape. Now, you know what I didn't do? I need to actually step it over to my half inch mark so that I can actually mark the half inch of that. No, I don't have to mark the half inch on this because that will come out. We already added it in the cutting. Okay, good. Just ignore me. So I'll continue that mark up there and then I'll come down here and continue that down. I'm gonna go sort of st straight down so that I can fold that up. Okay, then I'm gonna go to the other side and put the bottom on, or the, sorry, the, the back. So I'm gonna fold that sort of out of the way. And then I'll take my back measurement and do the same thing I just did. Put it on there with my one inch coming down. I will 
straighten that up a little there. Now with some of this fabric, this is a very soft, like a silky almost fabric, a polyester. So I have to kind of hold it to make sure it really goes on. And now we have our measurement there of my shorts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my, before these things come apart so I can cut them together, make sure they're lined up on top of each other. And then I'll use my rotary cutter and cut these parts out. You could also use a pair of scissors or pin these together first. Now these need to be less precise than if I was doing a really nice pair of pants or something or a jacket where you'd wanna be really careful about how precise you get with your cuts. Obviously I'm not as concerned because these are sleep shorts. So I'm not as worried about whether or not they're actually lining up exactly. As long as I can sew these pieces together when we get going. Now some people wanna make these really specifically um, luxurious. And you could use French seams for parts of this. I'm actually gonna use a serger to serge these edges because I think they're gonna work better. And then we will use the purple th thre uh, thread to actually do our top stitching. So um, let's pull the serger out and we will go ahead and serge up these edges. So a serger actually uses four threads to overlock and you'll actually see the thread cones that are back on the back here. And um, it's gonna create this overlock design, like what you see in the inside of a t-shirt. So I've got my material laid out and I'm gonna sew along those, those um, angled lines on the front and back. Not down at the, 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 the actual pant legs, just along that rounded stitch. This is the front. And I'm gonna go in and use my serger, line these up properly. And you could pin these if you want, or clip these if you wanted. Um, I wouldn't pin near a serger, and I'm gonna tell you why, because you don't want the pin to actually go through the, accidentally go through the machine and then mess up all of your timing. So I'm gonna be real careful with these. Ooh. I'm gonna shorten my stitch length down quite a bit. And because this material is so very slippery, I'm gonna double check regularly that everything's lining up. Now, uh, a, there's a blade on this device that cuts off the material. You'll see it's cutting off the very tiniest amount of, the, of that purple fabric there. And the blade's great, but you just have to be careful that you don't overshoot the fabric because this is not forgiving like a sewing machine. I can't just take the stitches out and have the exact fabric that I started with. So that's a problem, you gotta be careful. So I'll just run out a little extra thread there. And now you'll see it's added this stitch on here. Now, um, you'll see the stitch in there. And when we open this up, then you get that nice, nice seam in there. So I'll flip to the other side and do the same thing. I started at the crotch area, you'll notice here, a lot bigger seam, a lot bigger curve because this is the buttocks area and your buttocks tend to be bigger than your front. All right. What I like about this machine is that it will suck the fabric in and, and hold it because there's two needles right in here that are shoving down through. And it's also a really secure stitch. Now that I've done that other seam, now I have my two seams done. And we're gonna talk about how to then hook these two together. So we went ahead and put those two stitches in. You see what we've got shape-wise now. We have our, ba our, our back over here and then our front, this side. And now as you open it up and you have to create those legs together, that crotch, so you open it up this way. So we've done. And we lay the front and the back together right here. And this is where some clips will really be helpful to do this. So you're gonna get those two seams right here to go together and lay them with one another and then go out to each side. And then that will create our pants. So we'll go ahead and serge this as well. And that's why I'll grab some clips to hold it in place. So as you can see on our pants, that's the, the hem at the top for our, for our waist. And then here's the bottom where the two pant legs come together. This is the back and this is the 
front. So I'm gonna take the two, just set it this way so you can see it easier. And we've gotta hook up, put that seam for the crotch area here, and then hook, connect these two pieces together for the leg. Now I would normally use pins for this and maybe put it in a regular sewing machine, but I actually think for clips will work really well. So we're gonna get our two seams together, right on top of one another and nest them together this way. And you can trim all these threads if you want that are left over from the serger. And in fact, I'll do that just to make this easier. You can still do this with a regular sewing machine. You're just gonna to wanna to finish these seams somehow, because this is, a, you know, this is, the crotch of your pants is actually one of those areas that is very likely to wear because you use it a lot. You know, your legs are going back and forth and they will definitely cause some wear and tear on your pants. So I'm gonna clip on either side of this just to keep it in the exact right thing. Now, if I were sewing this with a regular sewing machine, I might actually start at the crotch and sew down each leg. The, since we're on a serger, I'm not really gonna do that. I'm just gonna start at one end, but I'm, I want these clips to make sure everything stays together and we don't get off where those two seams no longer line up. That'd be a bad thing. And we'll line these up over here. Now, this is not going to be perfect, but I'm going to come back with the serger and hit the bottom edge uh, around the entire leg. All right, so I'm going to start here and serge all the way down to the other side. So that has created our crotch area here. Now I'm gonna do each of the, the legs. This is a leg and I'm gonna stitch it all along the bottom edge and you kind of have to work your way in here because make sure your needles are up and just roll it around. Now, you're not really gonna see these when I sew this because I'm gonna iron in a fold and then I'm going to um, I'm gonna stitch it, top stitch it with the sewing machine. But this surging just makes it feel like a professional piece made like in a factory. And it helps with, with wear and tear. So you'll see there, I've just sort of chained off the edge and then this will get folded and you won't even see that from the outside. Now here you'll see, I was saying earlier that you know, that fabrics didn't exactly line up, but I'm just gonna trim this with the serger. The other thing is you gotta make sure your fabric stays out from underneath it. Because again, this cutter is unforgiving. It will chop off every bit of fabric and then you won't have any fabric to fix it with. Here's where we're getting over where I started, and I'll just stitch, stitch off, keep it out of the blades, and that way I can just trim it. And that part's finished. Now I'll do the top portion where the waist is, and then from there we'll go back over to the uh, the table and start working out how to uh, put in the the elastic and to hem the pants. You'll notice I'm cutting off that salvage edge. So I started at the center um, in the front, no, no, the back, and now I'm going to the center front and I'll go back to the center back. All right, so far I've got a pair of shorts here. You can see the legs 
This is the front, and you can tell because the back comes out longer. There's the top, and I'm gonna work on elastic to go all the way around the top. So the, fat, the elastic that I have is one yard, which is 36 inches, but it stretches. So my goal is to make this a little smaller than the 36 inches, but stretch out to at least about 40. So I make sure it goes over hips and everything, right? So I'm gonna take this, see how much the measurement. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you, show you what five inches looks like. This is five inches. And where's my item? So that's five inches, but it actually stretches to almost 10, nine inches. So if I took this and cut, wanted it to be at least 40, five to nine, basically, <clears throat> if I wanted to go at least up to 40, I would, and it almost doubles, I would need to cut at least, you know, 25, 30 inches. Well, I think 30 inches for somebody whose waist is over 30 is probably good because it will stretch out to 40. So if I measure 30 on my measuring table, that's 30, and it actually stretches out to, from 30 it stretches to, wow, 48. So I could even make it a little smaller than 30. Maybe I make it 26, and that'll stretch out to 40. Yeah, 26 stretches out to 40, all right? So I'll do 26 and maybe add an inch or two to it just to give it a little bit where we're gonna flip it, cross it over itself. That's about a 27 inch piece of elastic. All right, then we have to decide, this is three quarter of an inch, so I need at least about an inch um, size of my casing at the top. And then I'll also figure out how to fold these legs over at the bottom. So I'm gonna go to my iron and fold the bottom edges over an inch, and then I'll stitch along that. Then I'm gonna fold the top down um, at least an inch at the top so that this casing can go through the top. So I'll do that and come back here and show you where to go from there. All right, so I have gone ahead and pin, uh, clipped everything. This is the, the top for the where the um, elastic will go into a casing. And then here are each of the legs. Now I want to show you on each of the legs. I've made them about an inch, not quite a full inch fold over. So I'm going to go to my machine and sew on this side, but with a purple thread and uh, make sure that I catch all of that material. And then that'll finish at the bottoms. And then I'll do the top portion, change my guide. Now I do have a guide on my machine. I put on a an actual guide so that I would know how far I was stitching. This is a seam guide, and uh, that'll help me when I go to put this together so that it's really beautifully done on the front. It'll look so professional. Now, my machine is down into a table, but a lot of sewing machines have a, this part will come off, and you can then put the seam around. So if you're doing like sleeves or something, you'd have a real small part. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that I keep the bottom fabric out from underneath, and I'm gonna start and end on this seam right at the leg. So I'll put that in there, line it up perfectly, and begin. I'll go with my needle down so I don't have to worry about it um, coming out if I move it, and I'll just take the clips off and go around. And again, it's gonna make sure that the seam is really nicely done all the way around and the exact same length all the way around. I did use my iron to get this pretty close to being a, a one inch fold over, but honestly, it's just hard to do that all the time perfectly. But so so by doing it this side, I'll make sure that I still catch all the material here. The um, the seam that I did with my with my um, serger. And having the clips, but also having that part that was ironed on helps a lot because that's the, the, uh, the fold is put in by the, the steam of the iron. And then I'm almost back to the starting point here. Back stitch a little bit, and now I've got a completely finished, uh, bottom finished hem for that one leg. And I'll go to the other leg and do the same thing. I bought this material probably 10 years ago, and uh, I bought it to make some scrubs back when I owned a uniform store. I thought, oh, maybe I'll start making some of my own, you know, scrubs, and it turns out it's just cheaper to buy them from manufacturers. 
but I bought a bunch of fabrics and this one, this purple actually matches another fabric that I'm gonna be using to make a, a kimono style um, robe. And I'll show you that fabric at the end of all of this. All right, so now I've got my, both of my legs done. Oh, they look so good. Now I'm gonna do the top portion where the, uh, where the um, waist is gonna go. And I put these two close together because I wanna see that I'm gonna leave this space open to be able to, to feed the elastic through at the end and to then stitch it closed when it's done. I will need to adjust my, uh, my width on my guide and I wanna make sure I go more than three quarters to almost a full inch. It'll make it easier for me to guide my, um, my elastic through it and it'll give it a little bit thicker stop top part. Now I need to go back here to where I started that. All right, I'm just gonna stitch all around that side too. Now, you realistically only have to make this a little over three quarters of an inch, and then that will really make sure that the elastic is super tight in there. But these are sleep shorts, and I figure they can be a little, a little loose and a little more comfortable. Some people would come down later and stitch, once they get the elastic in, would then come back and stitch down through the elastic to really like flatten it out and make sure it won't roll. But this is non-roll elastic, so that's fantastic. And, you know, it is, they're, again, they're sleep shorts. I'm not that worried about it. All right, we're getting close to the part where we need to watch where we're gonna end because we have to leave that open. And here it is, right down here. This is the part I'm gonna leave open. So I just kinda wanna make sure my hand is somewhere around there so I stop. All right, and that left an opening for us to put our elastic in. Now you don't just take the elastic and try to shove it in this way. You would never get it all the way around. So instead I'm gonna get a, a large a large safety pin, put it on here and guide that through. But I'll show you a couple options. So I'll be right back to show you how to do that. So you need to get this elastic through the casing at the top of these shorts, right? Here's the shorts. I need the elastic through the casing. And we have an open spot to do that with. Now, there is a device called a purple thing and I'll put a picture of it over here for you. Um, I, I normally have one of these. I just can't lay my hand on it right now, but you could feed through the part at the top there that has a hole in it, you could feed this elastic through it into that and then pull it through. The other option is to do the same thing with like, you could use a, um, a, a this is a paper clip. And you would basically feed the elastic onto it and use this to feed through, right? You would feed this through and sort of pull it through. That is okay. You could also put it onto, um, through a, a pen. So you need to find a way to tie it onto here or hook it onto here and then feed that through. Or you could take the top off, pinch it through, put the top back on and hold it. My favorite though is a safety pin. So I'm gonna take the safety pin and because I don't want these edges to bounce every time they go through, I'm gonna fold it, those that in half. Now it's non-roll, so it doesn't really want to roll, but I'm gonna fold that in half and put the safety pin through it, right through the end there. Close the safety pin, and now that's gonna pull through. Now you do have to be aware of this edge. You wanna make sure this edge doesn't get pulled all the way through. So in fact, I'll use a clip or two to clip it in once we get to that point. So what I'll do is, I know we're gonna start in here so I will take this other end that we're not doing and I'm gonna clip it on to make sure it doesn't get sucked through. You could pin that on through. So that's pinned on so it won't get pulled through. And then I go to the other end and I start feeding it through. So I'm gonna push this through here and then I will just hold the safety pin with this hand, the end of it, so you can see kind of that top pointing through, and then I'll push the, th the fabric over it. See, so it's now starting to pull through. And you kind of feed quite a bit of it if you want to, because it's very thin fabric. 
and then I'm just pulling it back as I go along, see? So this will slide it through. You can get quite a bunch on there. See how much I got on there? And then pull it out. I know people that actually make a bunch of like shorts for family for gifts and they will um, just, you know, get a bunch ready at this point and then take them in front of the TV and just sit and, and do this process for all the different ones. Now, had this been a pair of shorts with a pocket on the side, right here on the side is where it would have been another piece of, you know, two pieces of material, a front, a back, and you have four pieces of material, and then you'd put your pockets in. But again, sleep shorts, I don't know why you'd need pockets in sleep shorts, so I'm not doing them. Now we're getting around to the, the other seam for the other part of the crotch. And then we will just be careful how we go over that material because we'll have a little extra material and there's some seams in there. So I just worked it, it through there. And you'll see it's starting to already gather the material, right? Because down here, there's very little left outside of it. Now you could, if you wanted, add a little tag or something in here so it's easier to know which side is the front and which is the back. What I like to do is sort of, um, if this is the front, I like to come in and flatten it out a little bit and then stitch down, stitch a shape so that the front has a little bit of a flat piece and you can tell which one's the front or which one's the back. You could also put a tag in the pants if you wanted uh, in here. I don't like it. If I'm sleeping in, in a pair of shorts, I don't really like a bunch of extra tags and stuff in them. So I probably wouldn't sew in a tag. When we come back out the other side, we're just going to stitch these two pieces of elastic together and I'm just going to layer one over one piece one end over the top of the other one um, I don't want to create make it bulky so I'm not going to put them together and stitch I'm going to lay them over top of one another and stitch this is working out pretty well so far you might want to add pull some of that fabric down just to make it easier and we're almost back to the front here now this is interesting it didn't take everything through so I've got to kind of work it it takes more through and I will hold this with my hand just to make sure it doesn't fall off we also want to make sure that the it's going in there flat which we'll look at in just a minute as I come out the other side so I'm almost done yeah you don't want this material to curve uh, the elastic to, to roll on the inside because then you'll always have a piece that's not flipped over straight here we come back out the other end and I can pull that material out and then what I'll do is I will make sure that this these two are flat to one another I'm going to go with my hand around it and make sure that stayed flat the whole way through that it didn't curve at all yeah it hasn't rolled at all so I'll pull these two out take that off pull these two out and they'll go on top of each other like this so let me go ahead and take off the safety pin Pull a bunch of that material back so it's out of the way. And I'll go to my machine and just stitch these two on top of each other. Just back and forth. I'll show you in just a second. There you go. I stitched across there. I don't care how look it looks because it's never going to get seen because it's going to disappear right in there. And then this is... This is the, the front. So I will flatten that out now. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flatten as much of that out. And then we'll go over the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch sort of a rectangle on here to really hold that in, this part in. So I'll pull it back a little bit so that that fold over is right at the very front center. See that? I'm gonna put that right at the front center and I will use a one of the clips to hold it in place. All right, and then we go to the machine and stitch that, like I told you, that'll show us where the front is. Let's go to the machine, I'll show you what that looks like. So here we are, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep flattening that material out. And I've gotta do two things. I've gotta stitch, finish stitching that line back on where the fabric goes over, which I'll do that right now. And then I'm going to decide where to stitch a, a square. So I'm going to take my material here 
and look at it and say, I'm gonna go with that. And you can measure this by hand if you wanted to. I'm gonna do it by eye. You could do it by hand. I'm gonna stitch up one side and back down. I'll go over and do the same thing by eye, figuring out it's about an inch over or so. Take that clip off, I don't want that there anymore. And just do the same thing. So now that is the front and there won't be any gathering there. And now if my friend is going to put these on, hopefully he'll look at it and see how it's gonna work. He'll realize that there is this setup here, a square, or sort of a rectangle shape right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish properly, um, you know, distributing all this and then I'll show you the pants that are done. I'm just spreading uh, the elastic around evenly, and this is they're still inside out actually, which is cute. Um, but we'll get that fixed in a second. And I've got that around. Oh, look at those. Look at those little shorts, they're cute. I'll turn them inside out or outside in, right side out, and then there you go. Look, I think that's really cute because it's got that little space to show you that those are the front, and those are the shorts that are finished. Cute. Not a very long time now. I did say I would show you the other fabrics. Let me grab it real quick. My friend is a gigantic fan of The Little Mermaid. So I have this really cute fabric that'll make a kimono style and he can wear it all around his house when he's off on trips. Um, he can wear it in the hotel when he's uh, waiting between his flights. He's a flight attendant. And I think this is gonna be so cute. So I will show you how to make this kimono style robe in another video, but until now, look at those cute shorts. All right, hopefully you figured out how to make some really simple, easy shorts and uh, you learned a few things. And until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now. All right, these look comfortable. I might have to find some fabric I like and make a pair for me.